What is up everyone, welcome back. So the other day I was just driving down the street and as happens more often than not these days, a random new Starbucks just pops up out of nowhere. And so I started thinking about, well, there seems like there's a Starbucks on literally every block these days. What is the average distance between any two Starbucks locations in Los Angeles? So we see that there's just tons of Starbucks all over Los Angeles. So this is a view of general Los Angeles and each of these little coffee icons you see is a different Starbucks. You can see in some areas they're super concentrated, in others they're less concentrated, but there seems like on any given Starbucks it's not too hard to get to the closest Starbucks to that one. So how would we begin answering this question? We'll need some kind of data and then we'll probably use Python to do some kind of analysis on this data. It turns out that Starbucks website itself hosts the store locator app where you can put in a zip code. So here I put in a zip code in downtown Los Angeles, 90012. And it gives me a list of a bunch of Starbucks locations that are around that zip code. So one idea right off the bat is to grab the URL that's at the top of this page and use Python's requests library in order to see if we can grab all the information on this page in a programmatic way. So let's see if we can do that first. Let me just try and show that. So the URL at the top of that page looks like this. So let's just give that the name of URL is equal to this string here. And now let's go ahead and try to call the request library. So requests.get on this URL. And we'll put that in a variable called response. So one thing, we first check if this was a successful request. So we do status code here. And 200 status code means it was successful. The next thing would be to check what the actual response looks like. So if we do response.txt. Whoa, it looks like there is a ton of stuff here that represents the web page that we were just looking at. Now what we're looking for in all of this mess is a list of latitudes and longitudes representing all of these stores that are showing up in this left panel. So if I were to do a control find for lat, maybe latitude, here we go. So here's a bunch of coordinates. So we have latitudes and longitudes. We have more latitudes and longitudes. So it seems like there's a bunch of latitudes and longitudes for all of the stores that this request is giving back to us. Now the question is how do we isolate just those lists of latitudes and longitudes amidst all the other text that's getting returned to us? And for that, we're going to use Python's regular expression library. And so I have that expression down here. Let me just grab it. So we're going to go ahead and say regular expression library dot find all. And here is the regular expression itself. Looks a little complicated, but I'll generally walk you through it. It's saying in this string here, so in the response text that we just saw, I would like you to look for any occurrences that say coordinates colon and then latitude, and then grab the corresponding latitude, followed by longitude, and then grab the corresponding longitude. And so we're gonna go ahead and run this, and we see we exactly got back this big list, each element of which is a tuple of size two containing the latitude and the longitude of the store. So now we're in business. We know for a single zip code, so here in this case 90012, we're able to get a list of latitudes and longitudes of all the Starbucks stores. So it turns out there are 100 things that get returned by default from this call. It returns the 100 Starbucks stores that are closest to that zip code. Now what we need to do to get all of the Starbucks locations in Los Angeles is to iterate through all of the zip codes that make up Los Angeles County. And for each zip code, we're going to do this call and extract these latitudes and longitudes. So after a little bit of searching online, we find that the LA City Geo Hub, so straight from the Los Angeles County data portal, we have this download of the CSV of all of the zip codes in LA County. So we go ahead and download that, and then in our Python files, let me get rid of all of this code we were using to play around with stuff. So the first thing we do here is we open up that zip code file. So if we do LA zips, what that looks like is a big CSV, and we're just gonna iterate through this zip column which tells you all of the zip codes in Los Angeles County. For each of these zip codes we're going to call our get store lat launch function which basically just packages that functionality we use to make the call to that URL using the certain zip code we're looking at right now. So you can see we're just plonking in the zip code right here and then taking the response coming back and parsing out all these latitudes and longitudes. So it takes a little while but we go through all 311 zip codes in LA County and now at the end, we have the Starbucks locs is the set of all latitudes and longitudes of all stores. 
Now we did some deduplication here using this set operation because as we said, it's giving back the 100 that are closest. And so if I put a zip code that's you know really close to this one, it's gonna give a big intersection in that list. So we just get the unique latitudes and longitudes of all of the stores. And now we get to do our analysis. So we want to know for each of these Starbucks locations, and by the way, how many Starbucks locations did we get at the end of this? So if we do the length of Starbucks locations, whoa, almost 1,000 Starbucks locations in LA County. That is a lot of stores. And so I feel good about the distance between any two of them generally being pretty low. So the way we figure that out is pretty straightforward. We initialize a distance matrix, we do a double for loop, and then we use the GeoPy library to give us the distance in miles between one latitude longitude and another latitude longitude. And we update those values in the distance matrix. And then for each of these 987 Starbuckses, we're going to get the index of the Starbucks who is closest to it using this operation here. Finally, in this cell here, we're going to basically draw a map of everything so we can see this in the way that it's best visualized. And if we do that, we get this map right here. So super cool, love drawing maps with Python. Each of these red little dots here is a Starbucks location. This blue boundary is Los Angeles County itself. And each of these black lines is connecting each Starbucks location to its closest Starbucks neighbor. So you can see this area here is a little bit sparser than the main LA County. But you can see that, for example, here's one Starbucks. Let me zoom in more. Here's one Starbucks in this building here. Here's another Starbucks near Lyons Avenue and Valley Street. And if you click on the line segment, it tells you the distance between them is less than a mile. So you could walk between these two things in less than 20 minutes or so. But where we really see the density come is when you look at this main part of Los Angeles. So looking at this general mass here, you see that these line segments are really short. If I click on some of them, 0.87 miles. If I click on this one, can't even get a good click on it, less than half a mile. This one here is about 1.7 miles. Ooh, these guys are 0.14 miles, easy walkable. So you can see that it really is not that much distance from one Starbucks location to the other. So there's probably some fun graph theory analysis to be done here, thinking of these Starbucks locations as nodes in a graph and thinking of these uh, links as edges, basically looking at what's the closest Starbucks to a given Starbucks and seeing what kind of these forms you can get. So for example, you see that there's these kind of clusters going on. You see this W shape of these one, two, three, four, five Starbucks that are all mutually connected to each other and you can get to them in a straight path. Other times there's more island kind of properties where there's just two things here. And if you get to these more densely populated areas, you can get more interesting shapes like this one over here. And so finally, to answer the question that began all this, let's take a look at this density plot of the miles to the closest Starbucks in LA County. And we see that actually there is pretty much no mass, no density of this plot beyond around two and a half miles. Every single Starbucks in LA County is at most two and a half miles away from its closest Starbucks. That's kind of crazy when you think about it. Two and a half miles, and that's just kind of the upper bound. The average, so this gray line here, is just a little bit over half a mile. That's kind of crazy when you think about it. If you're at any Starbucks in LA County, then there's a good chance that the closest Starbucks is going to be half a mile or about a 10 minute or so walk away from that Starbucks. So we see that the closest is actually 0.03 miles. That literally seems like no distance at all. And the furthest it could possibly be, the furthest distance between two Starbucks in LA County is 2.62 miles. Still fully walkable if you really wanted to commit to it. So this kind of blew my mind. Just looking at it visually was super pretty. Getting a visual look at solving this problem that we thought of. But the main point of this video is really talking about, here's a question I have around data. In this case, it was kind of a silly question of what's the closest distance between two Starbucks. But even whether the question is silly or serious or if you're using it for a real project, an academic project or work, wanted to show that although in school we typically use these kind of prepackaged data sets from Kaggle, or from the internet somewhere that are nice CSVs, everything's clean for us. In the real world, we kind of have to use what we got. And so in this case, we were scrappy. We were able to go to the store locator, kind of get a sense of how it works, realize that we could put zip codes in here and that would work, and then get all of the zip codes in LA County using this other website, and then combine all of that knowledge using Python in order to programmatically iterate through all these zip codes, and then grab all of the Starbucks that are around that zip code. So just basically wanted to say that be scrappy makes you a really good data scientist, be willing to go in and look for data where it exists in the form it exists and get it in the form you want. That is probably one of the, if not the, top skill for data scientists. 
So hopefully this was a fun little video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the section below. Thank you so much for watching until now. Like and subscribe for more videos just like this, and I will see you next time, everybody.